Welcome to a new episode of our online TAFL course. Before we talk about the different methods, first we need to distinguish between the differences of two of the main approaches in TAFL. Well, first we have the teacher-centered approach and the student-centered approach. Who is more active in the classroom, the teacher or the student? That depends on the approach that you are following. If you are following a teacher-centered approach, then this means that the teacher is more active than the students and the students are a little bit more passive. How is the teacher more active? We're not talking here about the use of body language and how you move inside the classroom. Actually, we're talking about who sets the rules, who is creating a safe learning environment. The teacher here is the one who's responsible for setting the rules. He's the one who is responsible for creating a safe learning environment. The teacher is also responsible for explaining the material completely on his own without the use of uh, the assistance of the students. The teacher is the one who directs questions to the students and he gets their answers and give them feedback on their answers if they are correct, if they need to change something. He is also responsible for assessing the students. He's the one who gives them feedback, he's the one who gives them assignments, uh, he's the one who tells them uh, you know, like, what is the deadline? Well, the students are more receptive to everything that the teacher does. While, on the contrary, for the student-centered approach, the students are more active. They are helping the teacher with setting the rules and deciding what are the rewards and consequences that should be applied in case of following the rules or breaking them. The, the students here are helping the teacher with explaining the material uh, through discussions, role plays, and uh, different techniques that the teacher might use. Another point of comparison here is the TTT or the teacher talking time versus the student talking time. In the teacher-centered approach, the teacher talking time is higher than the students, while in the student's talking time in the, in the student-centered approach, it is higher, you know, because here the students are speaking a lot and they are participating a lot inside the classroom. If we're going to take another point of comparison here is, uh, do the students work individually or uh, in teams inside the class? If we're talking about following a teacher-centered approach, then the students usually sit in roles like in a lecture and they are all receiving the information and they work individually. But if we're using the student-centered approach here, the students are working in teams, they are collaborating and they are helping each other, they are using the language to communicate together and to help each other to become better and fast learners of the language. So right now, as a teacher, which approach should you follow? Should you follow the teacher-centered approach or the student-centered approach? Well, actually, each one of them has their own advantages and disadvantages. If, for example, you are uh, using the teacher-centered approach a lot and you, uh, you are excessively using it, then this might actually lead to a very boring class where the students will be sleeping and they will be wondering and thinking about the break time and what they will have for lunch today. So that would be very boring. And if you're going to use the student-centered approach, then in this case, this could be like, uh, if used excessively here, then the students, you know, will be always noisy, they are running after each other, and there will be a lot of chaos inside the class, everything will be out of control. And you know, uh, a lot of teachers who do not know the difference between uh, these two approaches and how and when to use each one of them, they might be actually using a lot of games, thinking that a lot of fun means a lot of learning, but in this case, the things could go upside down. So we need to know when and how to use each approach effectively. So should we be using only one of them all the time? No, you can use a teacher-centered approach, then move to a student-centered approach or use a student-centered approach and then move to a teacher-centered approach according to the situation that you have. Some of the things that you could be considering is, for example, the level of the students. Here we're talking about the level of the students when it comes to their English and also to how they are uh, capable of depending on themselves while they are learning, if they are autonomous learners or not. For example, if you are teaching completely 
complete beginners, then in this case, you might be relying a little bit more on the teacher-centered approach in the beginning until the students are, uh, you know, getting better in the language and they can, you know, handle things. And if you're using, uh, if you're teaching, for example, intermediate levels and above, you might be starting with student-centered approach directly because the students will be able to understand you easily. And when it comes to being autonomous learners or not, you can be also using student-centered approach with, um, you know, the, the beginners. But in this case, you have to make sure that the prerequisites that are needed to use this approach are there. For example, if you're teaching students um, that they need to get uh, all the vocabulary that are related to health topic or to uh, to school or any topic that you like and you ask them to go and find it in this case in this case they might need to use a dictionary first here before you ask them to use a dictionary you have to make sure that they know how to use a dictionary whether it's a soft copy or a hard copy because you cannot just go and tell them go and get it without giving them the tools that will help them one of the points that you can also uh, put it into consideration when you are teaching and uh, deciding which approach you might use is the the level of the material for example if you're teaching something that is very difficult you might explain it through a teacher centered approach and after that when you make sure that the students got it and you check their understanding then you can make more practice on it using the student centered approach other points to consider are the time that you have and the students number inside the class for example if you have you know like just 30 minutes and 100 students to teach then in this case you might go with a student with a teacher centered approach where you can use a lecture or something but of course the lecture doesn't have to be dull and boring because you can use visual aids you can direct the questions you can have some activities for large groups so that the a lecture or the teacher centered approach would be fun but in the case of having you know a small number of students and a longer time to explain the lesson then you can directly use a student-centered approach today we cover the differences between the teacher-centered approach and the student-centered approach feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel like our Facebook page and send us any feedback or any questions that you have about the topics that we are delivering thank you so much for watching our videos and wait for the coming video